some of this too. So listen closely because then we don't have to double up on some of these questions. All right. So you guys, first off, let me ask you, are you excited to be here? Very no. Uh, <laughs> now, I knew he was going to say that. I knew he was going to say no. So why don't you tell us why not? Well, uh, we, we love doing this stuff. Recent, only recently is the show, especially after the drop on Netflix, has it really started to receive a, a wider audience. And we're now we're starting to get approached for the comic conventions and because it's a uh, because it's a comic property it means we'll probably be doing a lot of this stuff from here on out so keep a, keep an eye out for this very cool and just in case there's anyone in here that doesn't know the characters that are played I would love to go down the line here and they don't want to hear me talk they want to hear you guys so can you tell us your characters that you play and what you love most about them uh, I'm KJ and uh, I play Archie Andrews and <laughs> yeah Archie's a legend so I like him <laughs> Camila Mendez. I play Veronica Lodge. Um, I love that Veronica's sassy and fierce way more than I am, um, which is why it's fun to play her. I'm Lily Reinhardt and I play Betty Cooper. Uh, I think what I love most about Betty is, uh, I don't know, how lovable she is and friendly and I often get annoyed very easily with people, and I'm not really a people person as much, so I appreciate that in her. Uh, I'm Cole, I play Jughead. I like uh, Jughead's dark humor and the sarcasm. Did I hear a squeal on that? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. All right, you that guys. That was me. So, <laughs> so I also wanted to ask, let's talk first about social media. I know that's a huge platform and a lot of you use that. Can you talk a little bit about social media, how you interact with your fans, and how you use social media for your characters? Oh. Yeah, you can start where whoever wants to go first. Um, meme queen, meme queen. We all scream for meme queen. <laughs> I mean, I really enjoy social media, like being able to interact with everyone, and I, I mean, I feel like sometimes the little verified check mark makes it feel like those people are unrelatable or untouchable or kind of like the elite. And I'm like, that's bullshit to be honest. Like I want to be able to talk to people who want to talk to me and I don't know, answer fans questions and just like I'm a real person and they can, it's just, it's interesting that there's now this opportunity that we can just have like real conversations with fans and get instant feedback and uh, yeah. Right. I've always thought social media should just be a reflection of who you are, and you should never try to create some kind of image. It just should always be who you are at that moment in time. And whatever you decide to share is up to you. You can be as open as you want or as private as you want. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's probably the same as what Cami said. Um, I, don't tr I try not to spend too much on it. Sometimes you get sucked into this deep abyss. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, I think it's good. And uh, after being on the show, it's um, obviously like grown a little bit, which has been pretty cool to see. But uh, yeah, it's a good way to reach out. I reckon it's sick. And uh, you can do some funny stuff on there as well. I don't know if <laughs> the stuff that I've been yeah, posting yeah. recently is a bit gnarly. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is a show that was designed uh, kind of in mind to be digested on, on 
internet mediums like uh, Netflix and the CW app. This, this show was originally built with an anticipation for good overnight ratings, but primarily to be viewed and digested on younger platforms. I, the Kind of the way that the industry is going is that it's yeah, uh, people who, the, the demographic for this show are only really watching content online anymore and at their own disposal and when it's most appropriate for them. Um, so it's been very interesting seeing the difference between our overnight, sort of this archaic understanding of televised content as opposed to the new way that people digest and how we market to a social media audience and how we try to get viewers through these internet mediums. And um, really, social media has elevated our show specifically from something casual to something massive. I mean, it, it really was the difference between a, a, a commercial failure and a tremendous commercial success. So it's thanks to social media in very many instances that we've been talked about and spread the way that we have been spread. I love that. Are you guys following all them on social media sites, by the way? Yes? Okay, good. Okay, good. So I wanted to ask you personal before, a little bit personal before we get into more of season one and what we can expect going into season two, but where are you guys all from and what is your acting background before finding these characters? Okay, do we can start with you. Yeah, I, uh, I come from New Zealand. I moved over to the States when I was about 18 years old and I'd done zero acting. Uh, I started when I was 16 on the show, actually, and I was on that for about a year and a half. Uh, not really ever wanting to do it. I kind of just fell into it. Um, but yeah, it's been, I've been really lucky and really blessed to be able to, to, be able to work and stuff. But uh, yeah, then I found Riverdale, and I've been lucky enough to work with these guys, and I can't wait to keep going. Awesome. Like you want to do it now, right? Yeah, I like it. It's good. It's good. We're making you happy. Like it. <laughs> Where I'm from, right? Yeah. Um, you say no working. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Um, I kind of grew up all over. I was born in Virginia, Atlanta, back to Virginia, back to Atlanta, uh, Orlando, Brazil. Pompano Beach, Fort Lauderdale, Miami. I was all over. It's amazing. Um, and then I went to New York for college. But I say I grew up in Miami because that's like where I spent my adolescence. Um, where, what was the... And you came right from college, right? This was almost your first job yeah. at college? Um, Talk a little bit about that because I think for a lot of people that's so interesting. I got an agent my junior year um, and I was auditioning for like a year, wasn't really getting anything. Um, and then this role came along right towards the end of my college career and I started, you know, jumped right into auditioning for that constant callbacks and studio tests and the timing was perfect because I graduated a semester early. So because of that, I was able to shoot the pilot without having to drop out of school at the very end. So meant to be. Yeah. So incredibly meant to be. Very cool. Uh, I'm from Cleveland, so I'm a Midwestern part. <laughs> oh. um, and I mean, I just, I mean, I grew up in like a little city outside of Cleveland, Bay Village, and I did local theater. I didn't even really like get the part usually, like when I auditioned, I wasn't really ever chosen that much for the lead roles. And then, I don't know, I worked my ass off. Then I found uh, my agent and manager. Uh, my mom would like drive me eight hours to New York to audition for things. And yeah. And, uh, I don't know. And then I ended up in L.A. And now I'm here. And here you are, right? Very cool. Uh, my brother and I were born in Italy. Uh, when we were very little, we moved from Italy over to Hollywood. Um, identical twins work very well in the industry as babies because babies can oftentimes only work an hour and if you have two that look exactly the same, you got two hours. That's called marketing, people. <laughs> Show business. Sell it. Um, and we did that for a long time, switched off on roles, did roles um, separately, did some stuff completely independently. Um, and just kind of worked, 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 worked. Uh, never really trained, just kept, kept doing it. Then we went to school, went to the same school as Cammie. Um, graduated, didn't know if we were gonna do it again, but Riverdale crept up and here we are. And here you are. So you guys, this next question is 
directly from the PR department at CBS. They wanted me to ask this question to you. So they said, the Archie comics have many colorful characters. <clears throat> Obviously, who would you like to see introduced next? And there are rumors about Sabrina the Teenage Witch. <laughs> so KJ, we can kind of start with you and we can just work our way down. I'm not even sure. There's been talk about Sabrina um, for season two, but we don't even really know. Okay. I don't think we even really know yeah. if, if it's going to happen or not, but that would be... I think the fans of, of the comics especially would, would really love that. And I think it would be, it would be fun for us too, but we're pretty, yeah. we're pretty in the dark even being the actors on the show, the writers give us literally nothing. We, sometimes we, yeah. the night before we start shooting, we get the scene that we're meant to be shooting. So it's, it's yeah, we don't know yet. Did he answer that? Do you guys want to add to that? We also have so many characters already yeah. in the show. Yeah. <laughs> it's like hard to keep up. Like, yeah, but our creator will be like, oh, this season we're introducing this person. And we're like, okay. <laughs> like, you know, they're characters that have popped up in the comics, but there's so many of them. Yeah. We're like, all right. It's such a large what you want to do. That being said, uh, a lot of key characters from season one have gotten a, a much more prevalent role in season two. Kevin is now a season regular, which is great. Um, yeah. Great. I like that. Yeah, Casey Cott, amazing actor, really, really needed a more prominent role. Uh, Skeet Ulrich, who plays FP, uh, my dad on the show, also is now a regular. Mark Consuelos. Uh, Mark Consuelos. Daddy Lodge. Tyra Lodge. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, finding a brand new character in the comics is kind of an interesting dilemma because, as they mentioned, we're already such a massive regular ensemble, and it's about doing the characters justice and having enough time to sort of talk about the storylines properly. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So I'm going to start to break it down, and this is also from some of my colleagues, and then I want to open it up to you. Do you guys, are you guys getting antsy to take the mic and ask these guys some questions? Yes? Was that a yes or was that a yes? Yes? All right, all right. Then we'll do it. Okay, so for KJ, I'm going to start with you. So Luke Perry, Molly Ringwald, obviously play your parents. So any advice that you've gotten from them about being a working actor and how it is being now a public figure and some people use the word famous and have they given you any advice? Um, I work really closely with Luke. Uh, we're, we're also really close. Yeah, we're really close now after um, working on the show. I never, I, I got to spend maybe a day of shooting with Molly or, or two days or something. I didn't, unfortunately I didn't get to spend as much time with her but she's also a legend. Um, but Luke is obviously gone through this whole thing on a, on a whole nother level um, with Nano 210. So I think we're all really lucky to have him on board. Um, and I felt really lucky to, to have those two as playing my parents as well. So I was, I was really stoked. But yeah, Luke has always got something, uh, always got a piece of advice. <laughs> He's like the, the, the on set dad. Yeah. He's like walking around. Even is he for house. real? Is the on set daddy? On set daddy, yeah. yeah. Um, and <laughs> No, but the other day, actually, I was, I had a call in my hotel room from a fan had called my room at like 2 a.m. And I answered the phone, and I was like, hey. And then this guy starts talking, and I was like, oh, just hung up. And then Oops. Luke told, I told Luke, and he goes, oh, yeah, no, you just got to, like, check in, and you just don't, you never use your real name for anything, apparently. That's what he has did, did the whole time on Ono 2 Ono. And I found that kind of strange, like, I'm constantly learning all these weird yes. things. Um, yeah. But yeah, he is such a good man. Um, I love him a lot, and I, I'm, honestly, I'm so blessed to be to be working alongside him. I'm sure you can see now, looking back to why so many people around the globe love him. Mm. It comes up on screen, and then it's so great to hear that like, behind the scenes. It's kind of the yeah. same way. Yeah. Very cool. Do, do you guys want to add anything about Luke or Molly? Kind of back Told me to not let Ubers drop me off at my house. <laughs> well, he like is. let them drop me off a block away and yes. walk. I think I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, well, that's kind, of, that's kind of the times that we live in. That's something yeah. actually you got to think about. It's funny that you could get all that advice, especially on the platform you guys are on now, where so many people know who you are when you're walking around. Sometimes it's easy to forget that. You just think you're you, but when you're walking around the street, everyone else thinks either that you're the, you're your character or they can relate to you. So it's, it's good to get that insight from people that have been around for quite some time. Camila, uh, this is also from CBS. Sounds like we'll be seeing Mark Consuelos joining the show as your characters. You actually brought that up as your father. So what can we expect in this relationship in season two? Um, I think there's going to be a lot of tension because I think Veronica resents Hiram for everything that he's put her through. 
But at the same time, we have a great storyline with Hiram and Archie, and there's going to be a rivalry there, just like there is in the comics. Um, and I know that Veronica is somehow going to be caught in the middle of that. There's going to be some real hate school scenes. Yeah, between like them. Roberto's already talked to us about some of the scenes he has in mind, and it's going to be juicy. Uh, yeah. I like that word. Do you guys like that? I like yeah. it. Juicy yeah. means we're tuning in to watch this. All right, Camila, thank you. And Lily, we saw glimpses of a dark side for Betty this season. Um, what is that part of your character like to play for you, kind of tapping into the, the darker side of a character? I mean, I think it's really fun for me as an actor, but also just really fascinating that you just, you, I feel like you kind of think you know who Betty is, and then these sides of her come out, and you're like, oh shit, like didn't expect that. So, I mean, we're, we definitely kind of touch on that a lot more in season two, and really explore who Betty is as a person you know, when her dark side is revealed and why it's there. And I think it's a lot of suppressed emotions and anxiety that she has. And so we definitely talk about that a lot more. So I'm excited. It's always fun to hear when someone is such a sweetheart too, when they get to play that kind of, because it taps into a part of your system that's maybe not usually there. And I'm going to ask actually that question to the remaining three in just, in just a moment. But Cole, so <clears throat> also from CBS. It's been a long and successful journey since, you know, your early series. We, we spoke about this a little bit backstage. So how has that experience from your background impacted what you bring to the character in the set of Riverdale today? Um, actually, it was more about losing a lot of it. Uh, I, I, Disney is a, is a very specific kind of acting. My, my brother and I had done everything from independent films to to blockbuster comedies, to a lot of, just a, a very wide array of kind of different styles of acting. And Disney inherently is like a very theatrical kind of acting. It's a live sitcom, you're trying to capture the attention of children. So a lot of the time it's boisterous and loud and you know, it's a poop joke, so it's not like heavily thought out. But I think, I think when you do, like you do any kind of role, and I'm sure the way that these roles will affect us by the end of this run, you have to adopt and internalize and, and method act your way through a lot of what the content you're being given and inherently that's gonna, that's gonna have an effect on how you treat your day-to-day -day environment as well because this is a persona that you've worn for, you know, in my case, eight years. Um, but going to college was a process of undoing a lot of that homeschooling and being in a sound stage and then this show, you, you can't bring any of that in. I mean, it's a completely different, it, it went from a four camera, live audience, 30 minute long sitcom comedy to a single camera, hour long drama that's on, and just a lot darker. So to any, you know, any actor that would be bringing in any of the, the sort of child stardom stuff that they're dealing with would, would be having an inappropriate look at how to act on a show like this. Very, very well said. And going back to what I said earlier, I was gonna ask you this question as well. So Jughead, can you talk a little bit about tapping into that dark side a little bit? Do you feel comfortable going to some of the places that that sure. character goes? Well, this is also, this is the key to good writing. I mean, good writing and good acting is grounded in real psychology. And I think, for Jughead, a lot of the stuff makes sense because he comes from this sort of this tortured familial past and the way he reacts to a situation, even if he throws a joke first, is a defense mechanism to guard himself from real emotional response. And I think that is a kind of psychology that you have to bring into every scene which informs it. But if you can make it make sense to you as an actor grounded in psychology, it means it's great writing. So that's really kudos to, to the guys behind the scenes who, who are doing way more for us than, than we could wish. Great team, no doubt about that. Camila, how about for you when you tap into that dark side of the character? I don't think we've fully seen Veronica's dark side yet. I love that. You just said that. <laughs> that means a lot of good stuff is coming. That's I think so. That. I'm not entirely sure, but I think, I think Veronica used to be really dark back in her New York days and in Riverdale, she's changed and she's humbled and she's so focused on being a good person and being more giving and selfless. Um, and I think 
if her any dark side is there, it's her protectiveness of the people she cares about. Great answer. How about for you, tapping into that wild side? I don't know if we've seen any of that from Archie either, but uh, season two, probably. More. That's uh, great. And how about for, do you like? I don't know, I just act. <laughs> We can go with that too. So I'm seeing some lines start. So we're gonna go right to the audience. Let's. We can start on the left here. Go ahead, Matt. Hi. I was wondering what couples you shift on the show. Fred and Alice for me. I mean, if 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 he's alive or not, we still don't even know. But <laughs> just Ian Walking. Just Pop Tate and someone, man. He just after the robbery, he just he just needs love in his life. <laughs> No, it's, it's an interesting question because, uh, and you guys know better than we do, the wars that people get yes, in online, you're... they often want our sidedness and certain opinions. And the truth is, the second we give our side to any one camp, we do a tremendous disservice to the other ones. So I'll tell you straight up, you can ask that question as many times as you want you will never get an answer out of us. <laughs> Seriously, ever. <laughs> and I think that's fair. So let's put another question over here to the right. Hi, this question's for all four of you. So the show has a lot of pop culture references. Were any of those yours specifically? And do you have a favorite that was on the show? I know, I remember I say something about um, Chuck having the dialogue of Diablo Cody and- He's not- uh... He's not the stuff of Oscar Wilde or Diablo Cody. Right. And I remember Roberto initially wrote Noel Coward, who I didn't know, I didn't know who that was. And I remember being like, Roberto, I don't think anybody knows who this is. <laughs> and he was like, well, my generation does. I'm like, yeah, but like, uh, not ours. <laughs> Do you guys know who Noel Coward is? I heard a couple yeses. That's I don't know who that is. I don't know any of Yeah, me neither. So I was like, let's change it to Oscar Wilde. I mean, Roberto's so witty and knows everything, so a lot of times he'll say a reference and we'll read it and be like, do you get yeah. no. so You have to ask him to explain a lot. Yeah, and if, uh, you know, it's something that no one knows, we'll probably change it, but a lot of times it's just a lesson learned for us, because we're true. just uncultured people up here. It's me. KJ, did you want to add anything? Nah. You're <laughs> Okay, so we'll go over here, go ahead. My question is geared towards KJ's character, Archie, and how he loves music and all that. Were you the one actually singing his songs? And if not, who was? Yeah, it was, it was me. But it was, um, we don't do that, we don't do it live, like when you see it. it we, go, or have, we go into a studio and we spend like a, a day in there recording, and then we uh, cheesily mouth over it when we're shooting. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> My question is about the plot, so it is a spoiler for season one. People haven't watched it. What was that, hon? Can oh. you? Yeah. Can spoiler you? Yeah, there alert, you go. guys. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if you could name Polly's babies, what would you name them? And what were your characters names? Zach and Cody. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Well, thank you. I like Dylan and Cole too. I'll take either, as long as I get royalties for it. Did you have a feeling he was going to say that? Uh, I wasn't really expecting anything. <laughs> <laughs> you great, thank you. All right, go ahead. Hi, um, I wanted to know, since there's so much like comic material for Archie, how have you guys um, approached these characters and kind of made them your own for the show? Well, I think a lot of it also comes through the writing. Um, <clears throat> we have such really, really good writers on our show. Yeah. Our writing's very stylized and distinct, so it's one of those things where as soon as you read it, you're kind of taking on that character. We're also the but first. there's so much to pull from the comics, and I think that was a huge thing when we were preparing to start shooting this show and, and trying to figure out what the show was. We, I constantly go back to the comics and observe the way that they wrote Veronica and, and how she moves and how she talks and how she's always closing her eyes and looking up. <laughs> Um, I think those behavioral things are important, but 
aside from that, I think we have to bring so much of ourselves to the characters. I personally don't really look back to the comics as much because Betty, I feel, is very, very different. Yeah. Um, she's kind of like this kind of gullible, naive girl who lets a man walk all over her a little bit. And the fact that our Betty is not that way is something I'm proud of. So I kind of, you know, and Camila and I both, and KJ, we didn't grow up really knowing what the comics were. So to go into this, we had kind of a blank slate, which was nice. So we, you know, we read the comics, we familiarized ourselves, but we kind of were able to just create these three dimensional people on our own through collaborating with the writers and uh, with our creator and talking to one another and just sharing ideas. And it was, it was all very collaborative and it's a constant process to keep building these characters. It never stops. There's always more to these people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really love what you said because it really is kind of making the character your own then. That's great. Oh, you weren't distracted? <laughs> <laughs> Trouble these two. All right, okay, go ahead, honey. You're the best. Will Jughead appear as a serpent in season two? Ooh, good question. Oh. Um, yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Good answer. I, I, you know, I think the other question is, is he still going to have his beanie on? And I think, yes. <laughs> also, yes. Um, uh, Jughead, was, uh, Jughead was also a character in the comics that uh, this show uh, took a lot of creative liberty with. Uh, he's very different in the comic. I think Betty and Jughead are probably the two most separate from their comic iterations. Um, and a lot of that was trying to find areas within our setting where you can tie in kind of character plot. And, and it, it's, the serpent thing is interesting because it's, it's been so well received. In fact, a lot of Jughead's narrative has been so well received. People just want to see you in a leather jacket is what's really <laughs> um, But even Betty and Jughead's coupling is something that's so different from the comics and was also so well received that I think People are kind of just on board for new Jughead and, and like torture Jughead, which I don't know what it says about you guys. Um, but yeah, he's gonna be a serpent for sure. Great answers, you guys. Okay, how, go ahead. Okay, hi, I love you guys. This is for everyone. If you could play any other character on the show, who would you play and why? Great question. And we can start with who, yeah. Who Female who? version of Jughead. I've said that before. No, I think it's like, I want to see this emo chick like, like in some suspenders with a beanie on, yeah. I think Betty for me. I love the idea of like the perfect girl who's very complicated internally. KJ. Cole, yeah, Cole can go. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it does, uh, Pop Tate always takes it for me, but I think, uh, I think Reggie would be cool. I think Reggie would be fun. Um, Reggie is another character that's going to be having a lot more screen time season two. Um, it's not the same actor. Uh, I'll say that right now. <laughs> um, but he's one of the characters that's fundamental in the comics and is, is, has a much greater role in the comics and will continue to be a fundamental part of Riverdale. Wonderful. Uh, I'll probably go <clears throat> Kevin. I think that would be fun. It would be, it'd, it'd, I think Kevin's, well, Kevin's my favorite character. Kevin? Right? He's yeah. mine too. Thank you. You agree? Did you say yours too? Kevin's my favorite, yeah. Aww. Thank you guys. <laughs> Alright, we'll start over here. Uh, what was your favorite episode to shoot? Episode 10 for me, the, all the party stuff was real fun. <laughs> real fun. Yeah. Or maybe the last episode in the snow. That was, I mean, it was a tough day, but it was so beautiful and so intense like we were all just like keeping each other warm and like yeah. running through the snow was so much harder than it looks where were you it looks hard because i look like i'm struggling i know <laughs> we look so stupid running through the snow yeah. they're like sprinting and we're like <laughs> and I, I thought i was gonna be really fast and as soon as i started i was like whoa okay <laughs> um we shot that where was that it's some um, Woods area. I, don't know. I mean, we film in Vancouver. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. But we don't, we don't know where that was specifically. Yeah. Can't you guys totally tell that they work together a lot? It's just so hysterical. Okay, thank you. We'll go over here. 
Hey guys, I'm a big fan of the show. My question is, I was just curious um, if there was one thing, quality you could change about your character in the show and to see where that would go, what would that be? Sorry, sorry I didn't quite catch it. I was just curious what quality in your character you'd like to see different and change. So is there any aspect to your characters that you'd like to see differently or change? Yeah, I'd, I'd actually like Jughead to be a little more separate. From, from the main cast. I think he started out as, as a really, as a much stranger character, um, and over time, his reacclimation to the group brought him closer and showed the friendships, and I think season two is gonna be dealing with it a little bit, and like how, how he feels specifically, but I would, I would like to take him a, a little riskier in terms of his strangeness, a little, a little creepier. Um, which I would like to tease out a little more because in the comics, and I know that I'm, someone's gonna hate me for this, Jughead's a creepy dude. <laughs> Jughead is a, is a creepy comic character. He, he's just like this super morally superior kid who, who has nothing to do with society and, and doesn't, and just thinks about food all the time. I mean, he's, he's very, I don't know if you guys have read uh, Death Note, but he's very much like L. Um, and I tried to bring a little bit of that into the character, and I'd like it if we sort of took it back there. Great answer. So get this, this is how fast time goes when we have a panel like this. We have approximately five to ten minutes left. So what we're going to start doing, right and left, we're going to start doing the rapid fire questions. So you get one question, but you have to let us know who it's directed to. Does that sound good? So for the rest of you in line, stay in line. We'll do this really quickly, and then we'll kind of wrap up and um, have these guys say goodbye to you guys. So, okay, we'll start over here. Okay, so my question is for KJ, and I guess it's kind of a spoiler for the finale if you haven't seen it yet. But, um, so we know you broke your hand uh, filming that scene where you're punching the ice. I just kind of want to know, like, what happened there, like how much of it was stunt, like with fake blood? And yeah, so what happened was we were running real long time, and uh, when that happens, people start, you know, getting a little bit hectic. And uh, <clears throat> so they had me punching the ice. We were on an actual frozen lake. Uh, they cleared all the snow off and they chucked a, uh, about a, f a foam pad about that thick and uh, we had not much time to do it so we all got ready, we were like sweet we're going to do it and they called action and I think uh, me and Cole I remember ran up to the thing and I just started, I just went for it and I got a bit carried away um, and it was really cold, you can't really feel, yeah. like I couldn't feel my hands really so I was just laying into this foam pad um, and about 10 minutes later, I realized I'd broken my hand because it was like it was really swollen. He kept denying it too. We were like, KJ, your hand's broken. He's like, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good. It was clearly, it was clearly, it was clearly <laughs> broken. What they, it was like so Your pinky broken. was like sticking out of your wrist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was gnarly. It was good. It's worth it though. It's worth it. KJ, owning that character. Okay, over to you. My question is to Cole. Cole, do you still have your scuba Steve? You know, they didn't let me keep that thing. <laughs> so the answer is no, and it's one of the things that I've always felt a bit bitter about. <laughs> okay. Hi, my question is for anyone who wants to answer. Um, who did you think killed Jason before you got the script for episode 12? They killed Jason before you read it? I thought it was collaborative between all the parents. I thought it was Cheryl. I thought it was Clifford. I knew it was Clifford. I thought it was Jughead. <laughs> Okay. You're, not even, you're not kidding, either. <laughs> All right, hi, go ahead. Hi, this is for Camila and Lily. Uh, I, want, I was curious to know about how you guys picked up the choreography for all the river vixen dances. <laughs> well, thank God I was not in that dance-off, because you guys don't want to see that shit. <laughs> That's for sure. We have a cheer coach. We have a cheer coach. And we cheer with, like, a real high school cheer squad, which, which makes me fun. feel terrible. Yeah. So, I don't know, it's just... She's the dancer now. I'm not a dancer. Well, you look like one. It's fun. <laughs> um, I don't really know what to say. It's just, it's work. We have to do it. Yeah, it's work. Nice. OK, ladies. All right, go ahead. OK, um, first, KJ, I love you. Um, I love you, too. Thank you. That was a perfect KJ. answer, by the way. Lily, how did it feel to kiss Cole? <laughs> Fantastic. How about that? Feels good. Feels great. That was real good. 
like kissing Cammy better. What? <laughs> Good answer. I really feel like we need to end this kind of on a high note, and I like I like where th this is going right now. So this is the deal because we're gonna wrap this up. We gotta respect these guys' time and everyone in here. So we can only do two more on each side, okay? And they gotta be rapid fire, and it's gotta go for one person. By the way. These guys will be downstairs signing some autographs in a little bit. I know, time goes so fast. So you can ask us ahead. anything you want down there as well. Awesome. Um, so this one's directed to like anyone who wants to answer. Um, what's your funniest memory you can share of your time filming Riverdale? I, when, every time I get asked this, I feel like there's so many funny things it's that like happen, but just don't know. We're on a constant high. Like we always are goofing around on set. It's hard to think of one. Surely we've done, but surely this has been some funny something. Surely, surely. Why do you just confess? <laughs> Jerry Keller, that was a hard Why day for all of us. Confess? Well, we can. Okay, over here. Um, this is directed towards anyone who wants to answer. What character can you relate to most on the TV show? The dogs, because I'm whipped. <laughs> to answer if you could choose any other actor or actress to play your character who would you choose <laughs> I want Cole to die his hair orange and his eyebrows and play Archie <laughs> I once saw a thing that like Elizabeth Gillies as Veronica I could see that oh God, I have no idea. Dwayne me the Rock job. Johnson is Jughead <laughs> <laughs> Dwayne we're gonna do one more question, so we'll go over here. Uh, this is for Cole. Are you haunted by the meme that started from the I'm a weirdo thing? No. No? <laughs> that, that's like the greatest follower boost I've gotten on social media in ages. You guys, how great, how great are these four sitting up on this stage right now? Are you guys excited for season two? Make sure to go downstairs, say hi to them, get your autograph. They're just as delightful backstage as they are sitting up here, and they're beautiful. You guys, one last question in Philly. Are you going to see anything in Philadelphia when you're here? Those rocky steps. There you go. <laughs> yes, it's a must-do, uh, right? The rocky steps, right? Thank you so much, you guys. You've been awesome.